In this video, you're going to get everything we know about the Nintendo Switch 2. The Nintendo Switch 2 or as Nintendo is calling it, the Nintendo Switch successor, is an upcoming platform that has been confirmed by Nintendo to be what's next after the Nintendo Switch. There is a lot of information out there, both officially from the word of Nintendo themselves, but also from extremely reliable and verifiable leaks. In addition, we have rumors both from a group of people considered fairly reliable, some that are less reliable, and on top of that, a lot of sound speculation based on available information that help paint a picture of what to expect from Nintendo Switch 2's hardware. I have decided to compile everything I can with sources to create the most comprehensive guide of everything we know may know and have educated guesses about in regards to Nintendo Switch 2's hardware. We are going to paint a story of what to expect while being sure to classify fact from rumor from educated speculation. You can skip to the desired section in the timestamps below and if you find yourself enjoying the video I would appreciate dropping a like and maybe subscribe as well and then be sure to head to the comments to add anything in that I may have missed. First, let's get to the facts as Nintendo has laid them out, simply because this is by far the most reliable and only thing we could truly know to be 100% accurate. On May 7th, Nintendo's president, Shintaro Furukawa, took to X to make the following statement. This is Furukawa. President of Nintendo, we will make an announcement about the successor to Nintendo Switch within this fiscal year. It will have been over nine years since we announced the existence of Nintendo Switch back in March of 2015. We will be holding a Nintendo Direct this June regarding the Nintendo Switch software lineup for the latter half of 2024, but please be aware that there will be no mention of the Nintendo Switch successor during that presentation. All right, so we know the system is getting an announcement of some type during the fiscal year that ends March of 2025. Pretty awesome. But that's not all Nintendo has told us. During an investors meeting in 2021 and repeated in another late last year, Nintendo's president stated Nintendo accounts were going to be forward compatible to the next platform releasing in 20XX as represented by this graph made by Nintendo. In addition, Nintendo clarified in a question and answer session with investors published in English a few key details about the Nintendo Switch 2. First, it's going to continue to support physical media, as Nintendo said it is part of their future plans when asked about the successor. In the same question and answer session, Nintendo also clarified they are no longer suffering semiconductor shortages, and it won't be an issue for the launch of the platform. This is an indication that Nintendo should be able to produce a lot of units quite smoothly for launch. Nintendo has, unfortunately, not indicated a time frame for when the system will release, though sometime in 2025 is a safe bet based on past precedent. More on this in the rumor section of this breakdown, but for now, we need to get into leaked information. Like any big tech company, leaks are bound to happen through various means, the most common being from manufacturing. While on this channel and many others, we often refer to several types of rumors as leaks or potential leaks, for the sake of this video, we will only use this terminology for publicly verifiable leaks, which at this time are considered as good as if Nintendo themselves handed us a piece of paper in person with all of these details. Keep in mind, leaks are not intended by the company to be public, and as such, we sometimes have to read between the lines to understand their meaning. I will be sure to clarify when I am doing so, so you know the clear separation of what's fact and what is 
educated speculation. Let's start with the earliest leaks for the platform, which began all the way back in 2022. That is because Nintendo's partner, NVIDIA, suffered a company-wide hack that they themselves verified, proving the information from the hack to be legitimate. During this hack, two pieces of information came up that may be relevant to Nintendo Switch 2. The first is NVN2. Now, what is NVN2? It's a version of the NVIDIA Graphics API. That's it. That's the facts. The reason we believe this is related to Switch 2 is because the graphics API for Switch is known as NVN. Now, this seems obvious enough, but technically we can't know 100% for a fact that this is indeed in relation to Switch 2. It's even possible it is a canceled API for a rumored canceled Nintendo Switch Pro. Again, but it is believed to have been a product at one point. However, what lends a bit more credit to it possibly being for Switch 2 is that it's specifically for the NVIDIA Ampere line. More on this later. There are references in the NVIDIA hack to two chipsets, the T234 and the T239. There were specs for the T234 in the leak, featuring 2,048 Ampere CUDA cores and 12 ARM Cortex-A78E 64-bit processing units. The problem with only focusing on the T234 is the chip itself is far too large to be something that you would fit inside a mobile handheld gaming device. It also happens to be a chip that's used in smart automotive vehicles. Yes, the T234 is a real product. Enter the T239, which is also listed as a cut down version of the T234. The exact specs of the T239 were not listed in the leak, unfortunately. As of this leak, it wasn't 100% known if the T239 would end up being the final chip for Nintendo Switch 2. Moving on, shipping data leaked fairly recently, just a few days before this video was published. This shipping data is about components traveling between NVIDIA, Nintendo, and their various manufacturers. This data was able to be uncovered by the folks over at Famiboards and has been examined for months. The shipping data, months ago, added confirmation that the chipset was indeed the T239, as Nintendo had several on order. This is all publicly verifiable, and we will provide resources to start the very tedious process if you would like to verify this information for yourself. It is a lot of work, and we did it ourselves, so it is certainly doable. Fast forward to this month, and the most recent shipping data update, which is about two months old, yielded more exact details. For starters, there is now a clear differentiator between what components are for dev kits and what ones are for retail. This was figured out by cross-referencing the component information with the Switch-related component information, being able to differentiate or at least better understand what retail is. Credit for all of this goes out to users such as LuigiBud and LIC on Famiboards, and they put in a majority of the legwork for these listings. Through this, we discussed a few key details that at this time are considered to be as good as fact. Switch 2 will feature 12 gigabytes of LP DDR5X RAM, running at 7200 mega transfers per second. This gives a maximum throughput of 120 gigabytes per second. Just to give you an idea, for comparison's sake, the Steam Deck, while it has 16 gigabytes of RAM, only has a throughput of 88 gigabytes per second. Switch 2 will feature 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 internal storage. This is fast enough to see a lot of load time style benefits. Magnets are connected to circuit boards on each controller and each side of the tablet portion of the system. While not confirmed, them being part of the circuit board suggests that these could be electronic magnets. 
there is a reference to a display port converter that outputs to HDMI 2.1. There is a reference to multiple fans of two different sizes on two different part numbered devices. While not 100% for certain, one of the part numbers appears to be for a tablet and the other for the dock. The one for the dock is referenced as a radiator fan, suggesting a cooling fin stack and fan may be present in the dock. There are references to a microphone, but it is unclear where it is located on the device. There are some shipping listings for screens, but they just say touchscreen and no other details, unfortunately. There are also references to the chip needed to support Amiibo and an Ethernet jack. There are some dimension references, but since it's hard to imagine, I'll just show you an image representation made by some users on Family Boards on what those dimensions look like. Yes, it's bigger than the Switch OLED, but not quite as big as the Steam Deck. Again, this comes from shipping data confirmed to be between Nintendo, NVIDIA, and manufacturers. And yes, you can tell if you sign up for a premium subscription to the shipping websites that Nintendo did order the parts themselves. This shipping data also confirms that yes, Nintendo is using the T239, a chip we know to be based on the T234 due to the NVIDIA leak, which is an Ampere-based chipset. Keep this in mind when we get to the rumor section. This paints a pretty clear picture of what the Nintendo Switch 2 will look like and what kind of upgrade it is. But notably, what we don't know is much about the T239 beyond being Ampere based and now the RAM information. So what now? This is where we get into the rumors, and we'll start with the ones considered most reliable. We'll give the story on each rumor, and reminder that anything that's a rumor is intended to be questionable in nature and not taken as a fact. It just exists for our purposes to see if these end up true once the system comes out. There were some rumors surrounding the platform before Gamescom of last year, but they don't seem extremely relevant today, so we'll leave a lot of those as just memories at this point and focus on the ones that still may hold relevance. First, rumors that developers had dev kits arrived at our doors as early as July of 2023. Secondly, several reports came out of Gamescom last year that Nintendo showed two demos on target spec hardware behind closed doors to select developers. Target spec hardware is notably not a dev kit. It is instead PC hardware that is specced in a way to approximate the real thing's performance. The two demos shown were reportedly a new version of Breath of the Wild and then the Matrix demo once used to show off the PlayStation 5 and at the time, Unreal Engine 5. The statements about these showcases were that Breath of the Wild had instant loading with a higher resolution and frame rate than the original release. For the Matrix demo, they showed off deep learning, super sampling, upscaling technology using advanced ray tracing features that their sources said were comparable and maybe even slightly better than the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. It is notable the Matrix demo was not using upscaling technology on those aforementioned systems and that NVIDIA is known for having better ray tracing capabilities overall than AMD. Direct hardware comparisons are tough, but these are based on rumored eyewitness reports. Known insider Nate the Hate added other details along the way, including that the developers he spoke to kept saying something about March 2024 and that the version of DLSS Switch 2 will use is DLSS 3.5, featuring ray reconstruction. It is widely believed it will not support frame generation, however, as that is a feature that requires the newer Lovelace architecture. Now, it is important to note that Nintendo President Shintaro Furukawa did go ahead and deny some of these rumored reports. According to a Japanese publication, Manichi, in which Furukawa spoke, he revealed that reports about the Switch 2 are circulating on the internet as if they were public information, but they are inaccurate. And Furukawa added that reports about a prototype of the upcoming handheld console being showcased to select game developers at an overseas event in summer 2023 are also untrue. 
true. Now, the big thing to remember about this is that, if you recall, we never said that there were prototypes of the platform actually at Gamescom. The rumors were only about a device that is specced to the level of the supposed Switch 2. This is important because there were outlets taking that and conflating it to mean Nintendo was showing dev kits to developers. So, when Shintaro Furukawa talks about those rumors, he does not clarify which ones are untrue, although that specification about a prototype, we definitely know that's not actually part of the rumor reports, and rather misinformation by some outlets who were reporting on other people's reports. Important to keep in mind. Also, in that same interview, Furukawa stated in that exact same interview that it applied for the patent with the understanding that patent information would be made public. It does not mean that it will be installed in a product. So what he was also going on is there's been wide speculation on various Nintendo patents, tons of them. And he's essentially saying that, hey, we know the patents are going to be published publicly. You shouldn't be looking towards them for hints at what we're going to do. Again, these are just words from Shintero Furukawa. Now, Pedro Henrique, otherwise known as Brazil Online, is a journalist of 20 years who has worked at the largest Brazilian gaming news outlets. He was one of the first to say that the system would feature backwards compatibility, something that has since been rumored from a bunch of different places. He also was the tip of the spear on the internal Switch 2 delay rumors. Those rumors stated that the system was due for a reveal in March and to come out holiday 2024, but Nintendo sent a letter to key developers letting them know that this is no longer the case and instead the system will be coming out in March of 2025. This was later backed up by well-known insider Midori who said the March release was firm. Other rumors are out there, most attributing them to a public posting by Switch accessory maker Mobapad, though the information may have actually been taken from a place called Billy Bill. Well-known Nintendo insider Pioro also said that this batch of rumors he has heard of and comes from manufacturing, but has not been able to confirm it with his primary source inside Nintendo. Okay, so what are these rumors? Well, there's Bluetooth 5.1, which means the old Joy-Con and Pro controllers are compatible through this method, and the new controllers will still feature HD rumble. Switch 2's backwards compatibility is for physical and digital. See, I told you this is part of the rumor mill that keeps getting repeated. The Joy-Cons are larger and connected magnetically to the console via electromagnets. Yes, you can argue this is what those magnets in the shipping leaks are for. The dock still uses USB-C and supports a 4K output, and the screen is 8 inches and 1080p. Technically, for proper credit's sake, the 8-inch screen was first stated by Nate the Hate as a rumor last year. He also said it would be an LCD, although he's later clarified this may have been just for dev units. If you check the Billy Billy website, there are a few more details attached to this entire rumor too. One is about a function button below the home button, and the other is about an extra set of buttons on each Joy-Con on the backside. What these are for, nobody knows. Now... We get into a bit of speculation and some rumors that get conflated, though is based on limited things that are known and based on leaks. The stuff is considered the least reliable information of the batch, but may prove to be true. Some of it is also conflated as just straight up rumors. First, Necro Felipe Lima, who runs Nintendo Universo, has heard about 600 megahertz, likely for a handheld mode, AKA the GPU speed. Angie at Reset Era claims there's a camera function. Then we get into specs from Necro Felipe Lima over on his website, Universo Nintendo. And where you go down here and see this entire giant list, such as four nanometers from TSMC, an eight core 878C at 
Who knows how fast it is? Your 12 Ampere SMs derived from the NVIDIA RTX 3000 series line. Potential dock performance of 2.5 to 4 teraflops. Portable performance potential at 1.5 to 2 teraflops. You see that RAM information in which we've gone over before with speeds of 7,500 mega transfers per second. Potential dock performance of 120 gigabytes per second. Potential portable performance of 88 gigabytes per second. The presence of a SysLC unknown Tegra G CPU. However, can access the CPU cache to optimize themselves. The screen at 7.9 inches using LCD, 1080p, 60 hertz with possible TV revolution up to 4K, internal storage of 256 gigabytes, potential cooling by a dedicated cooler, a LAN port, HDMI 2.1 port, USB-C ports, Bluetooth 5.1, Wi-Fi 6 potential, and magnetism for attaching Joy-Cons, microphone, etc., etc., etc. Lastly, of course, is the most recent Muji possibility for the Switch 2 codename. It is stated by a couple people on Family Boards, Necrofilipa Lima, and inside some code in the bezel engine used for Endless Ocean Luminous. Now that's a lot, and folks, there are things out there if you really want to let your mind run wild, but everything presented in this video is the stuff that's actually relevant in the end. One last bit of speculation is many believe the Switch 2 will support a newer, much faster version of micro SD cards known as Express. Oofta. The research alone hurt my brain on this one. And if you want to keep up on any future developments, you can stay here for all the individual updates, or you can follow the craziness over on a thread of family boards where they continually update the original post with every little minute finding and rumor. There are things in the post we didn't go over, mostly because of their questionable reliability. I wanted to be sure we stuck with the stuff that is specifically known to be about this platform. To end, I just want to show that post by Universal Nintendo one more time as this gives a nice summary of facts and rumors for the system's hardware combined into a single list. It is indeed something to behold. We'll make a part two to this particular video about all the games and software that are rumored to be coming to the platform in a future video. We wanted to keep it all related to the hardware this time around. So I really hope you enjoyed this in-depth look and I thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you guys in the next video.